strangely enough, progress on Flight 9 has slowed after a strong initial push, potentially delaying the upcoming launch. So what's causing the holdup, and when can we expect liftoff? In other news, the U.S. Space Force recently reassigned missions between Vulcan and Falcon rockets, further spotlighting the challenges faced by ULA. And finally, Spin Launch is making headlines with bold plans for the future. Let's dive into all of this on today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX kicked off the month with an exciting milestone, the static fire test of B-14, marking the first time a Starship booster has been reused. The test on April 3rd was powerful and smooth, fueling hopes that the launch campaign for Flight 9 would proceed quickly. Many assumed this would trigger a rapid series of follow-up events leading up to liftoff. However, that initial momentum seems to have stalled and the pace at Starbase has noticeably slowed. Since the static fire test, no further tests have been conducted on B-14 at the launch site. In fact, the only visible movement has been the recent lifting of B-14 off the orbital launch mount. A road closure notice was issued for the 8th of April between 10 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon central, which suggests the booster might be transported back to the production or staging area around that time. Still, the lack of activity raises questions about the current timeline. Once returned, B-14 will need to go through a detailed check-in process, especially with the engine system, which must be carefully inspected to prevent the kinds of issues encountered during previous flights. This phrase alone could take several days, if not longer. Following these inspections, B-14 will require installation of critical systems, such as the hot staging ring and the flight termination system. These installations are not simply plug and play. In particular, the hot staging system may take extra time, as engineers will likely conduct in-depth evaluations of the clamp system. This component has become a focus of concern, with some suspecting that the ring or clamp structure may be contributing to recurring issues observed with the ship stage in flights 7 and 8. Thorough checks and possible redesigns could extend this phase of the process. Only after these steps are completed can the booster be returned to the launch site for final integration and launch rehearsals. But it's not just B-14 experiencing delays. S-35, the companion upper stage for the next flight, has also seen sluggish progress. It was moved back to the production site on the 13th of March, and in the month since, it has not not been seen moving again. A road closure scheduled for the 8th of April from 12 to 4 in the morning briefly sparked speculation that S-35 might finally be on the move. However, the recent arrival of a booster test stand suggests the window may instead be used to transport B-17 for upcoming cryogenic tests. That leaves the movement of S-35 uncertain and postponed once again. The slow movement of S-35 has implications for the overall launch timeline. Following its eventual return, it's expected to undergo multiple static fire tests, particularly in light of the second stage problems experienced during flights 7 and 8. These tests will be vital to verify engine performance and system stability under pressure. After static fires, S-35 will also face a thorough post-test inspection phase, likely to be extended, to ensure all systems are functioning reliably. Only then can the ship proceed to the launch site for integration. Once both B-14 and S-35 are back at the pad, they will have to undergo a full wet dress rehearsal. This is a crucial final step to simulate a launch countdown without ignition, testing all systems and fueling procedures. SpaceX skipped this step for Flight 8, which may have contributed to the abort and technical challenges during the countdown. Given the recent issues, it's likely that SpaceX will choose to perform the WDR this time to ensure mission readiness. Another complicating factor is the ongoing investigation into Flight 8. While the Flight 7 investigation was recently closed, the issues encountered in Flight 8 appear to be similar, which might help accelerate the current inquiry. Still, having an open investigation during launch preparations could serve as a distraction and adds an element of uncertainty. 
Technically, SpaceX can proceed with Flight 9 even if the investigation isn't officially closed, but the findings could influence any last-minute design or procedural changes. With several key steps still unfinished, it's hard to believe the next Starship launch will happen in the next week or two. Earlier predictions are quickly becoming outdated. Musk had once suggested a four to six week turnaround for Flight 8, pointing to a possible mid-April launch, but that now seems unlikely. Even his most recent coming up soon post on X after B-14's static fire lacked specifics, hinting at growing uncertainty. Launch rumors swirling around April 18th are starting to look too optimistic. Even April 20th, a date with symbolic meaning for SpaceX, might now be out of reach. At this point, a late April launch seems more realistic. Given the current pace and outstanding milestones, April 26th is emerging as a more reasonable target. But as with all things rocket-related, especially with something as complex as Starship, timelines are fluid, delays happen, technical hurdles pop up, and caution often outweighs speed. That's especially important when the goal isn't just to launch, but to do it successfully and reliably. While it's natural to feel a little let down by these shifting timelines, success must remain the top priority. With back-to-back second-stage failures in Flight 7 and 8, SpaceX can't afford another major setback. Taking the time to get things right is not just smart, it's essential. These delays are signs of careful planning and attention to detail a mindset that strengthens the launch system in the long run. This isn't new for SpaceX. The company is known for pushing limits, failing fast, learning fast, and coming back stronger. So if you're still here, still keeping an eye on Starbase, and still rooting for that next big step, let us know by dropping a comment saying, I'm still waiting. Because while the countdown may not start tomorrow, the next Starship flight is coming. And when it does, it just might be the best one yet. Now, let's take a look at the recent launch vehicle swap between ULA and SpaceX. The U.S. Space Force has reassigned the GPS-3 SV-08 satellite originally set to launch on ULA's Vulcan to SpaceX's Falcon 9. This shift highlights the growing confidence in SpaceX and the ongoing delays facing Vulcan. GPS-3 SV-08, built by Lockheed Martin, has been launch-ready since 2021 and is currently in Florida, awaiting a Falcon 9 liftoff no earlier than late May. In a corresponding move, the less time-sensitive GPS-3 F-1 mission had been moved from Falcon Heavy to Vulcan, giving ULA some room to recover. A similar switch happened last year when GPS-3 SV-07 was moved from Vulcan to Falcon 9 and launched successfully. These changes underline Vulcan's continued struggles. Despite years of development, the rocket has only completed two test flights with booster issues causing delays and halting operations. These delays have affected not just GPS launches, but other high-profile missions like USSF-106, 87, and Dream Chaser's debut. With mounting pressure from Phase 2 deadlines and Phase 3 contracts, ULA's ability to deliver is in question. Although selected for both Phase 3 lanes, Vulcan's slow ramp-up puts ULA's capacity to fulfill its obligations at risk. Meanwhile, SpaceX has become the Space Force's most reliable launch partner, securing the majority of Phase 3 missions. Its consistent performance, rapid cadence, and proven reliability has made it the preferred choice for urgent national security payloads, SV-08 being a prime example. The swap is more than just a schedule adjustment. It's emblematic of a broader industry shift. In today's space race, reliability and speed matter more than legacy. SpaceX's innovation and agility have set a new standard, while traditional players like ULA must now prove they can keep up. The coming months will be critical. As SpaceX surges ahead, ULA must show it can match pace or risk falling further behind. To support development and commercialization, SpinLaunch has secured 12 million US dollars in funding from Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace. The two companies are partnering closely on the project with the goal of launching the first orbital demonstrator by 2026. Eric Lee, 
president of Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace, expressed strong confidence in the program, stating that the Meridian Space Constellation will offer significantly higher broadband capacity in a satellite constellation compared with what is available on the market today. That's a bold promise in a market increasingly crowded with players like SpaceX's Starlink and Amazon's Project Kuiper. The most intriguing part of this story isn't just this satellite constellation. It's how spin launch might deliver it to orbit. The company is developing a radical alternative to rockets, a 108-foot spinning arm inside a vacuum chamber that flings vehicles skyward at hypersonic speeds. Once at high altitude, onboard engines ignite to complete the trip to orbit. This method could slash fuel use and dramatically reduce launch costs if it works at scale. But a key question remains, will Spin Launch use this kinetic system to deploy the Meridian satellites or partner with traditional launch providers to ensure mission success? So far, the company hasn't confirmed and skepticism persists. Launching this way poses major technical challenges. Intense forces, satellite durability, and scalability are all significant hurdles. Still, Spin Launch is pushing ahead and Meridian Space is its boldest project yet. If successful, it could validate a groundbreaking launch method and offer fresh competition in the broader market. The coming years will be crucial as the company moves from concept to reality. Spin Launch's approach is bold and disruptive, but in space, bold ideas must prove they can fly. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.